Welcome to the second histology lecture. Uh, I will, I will uh, do the, the next three uh, histology lectures. My name is Esther Fabian, um, and we will talk about uh, the epithelial tissues in these upcoming three uh, lectures. Uh, during during the lecture, if you have any questions, uh, then uh, you feel free to ask. Okay, so you can just just say <laughs> what's on your mind if you want. Uh, don't you can you can just stop me anytime if you don't understand something. Uh, so uh, I think yesterday you had uh, the first uh, histology where it was an introduction about about uh, the whole whole subject. And, and now we will go a little bit deeper and we will start our first basic tissue, which will be the epithelial tissue. So, um, <laughs> I think just the Yes? Is there a possibility for you to upload the your slides before the lectures or even they, after? They are uploaded already. Oh, thank you. You can find them on the on the ARN server in the lectures part in histology one, so so you, it's it's already there. Okay, and uh, we we will make a recording about this uh, lecture as well, so you will you will be able to, to uh, watch it through again uh, if you want. So it will it will uh, be uploaded to our YouTube channel, and in the group I think you will be able to to reach it as well. OK, so uh, what are the basic tissues? So I think uh, Dr. Horvath mentioned you yesterday that we have four basic tissues and, and this is how they are, they are uh, also positioned after each other. So usually first we have an epithelium. Under the epithelium we have a connective or supportive tissue. Then we have some muscle tissue and uh, <laughs> as well. OK. Uh, would you please uh, mute yourself, all of you, because uh, I can hear somebody and it will it will make the my voice uh, not hearable. OK, thank you. <clears throat> so we will start with the epithelial tissues and let's see what are the basic characteristics of the epithelial tissues. So first of all, as you can already see on this small picture, in the epithelial tissues, the cells are connected very, very tightly to each other. OK, so they are very, very close to each other. There is only a very, very tiny space in between them. So the extracellular space uh, is hardly there. OK, very small. All the cells, uh, or actually all the epithelia, uh, are sitting on a so-called basement membrane. Later on, we will get into uh, deeper details what the basement membrane is. But it is very important to know that under the basement membrane, you will find always connective tissue. Okay, so if you know that you see an epithelium, then underneath the epithelium, there will be always connective tissue. Try to remember this for, for the exam as well, because this is a very frequent question. Um, so if you if you remember this rule, then then it will be a big help for you at the end of the and the end of the semester. Okay, so epithelium, basement membrane, and below that, always, always connective tissue. There is no exception. Finally, a rule without any exceptions. It's quite rare, actually. The epithelial tissues uh, do not have any blood vessels. Uh, the blood vessels are actually running below the epithelium in the connective tissue. OK, and uh, the nutrients can reach the epithelial tissue uh, via diffusion. OK, so uh, with diffusion, it will be supplied with the nutrients. And actually, 
this the the rate of the diffusion will restrict the thickness of the epithelium. It cannot be too thick because then the uppermost layers wouldn't get enough uh, nutrients. Uh, and you will see that all the cells of the epithelial tissue are polarized cells. It means that uh, the surfaces of the cells are different. They have different characteristics. They have different uh, cell organelles. Uh, we will see these differences also later on. Uh, functionally, we can we can classify the epithelial tissue in uh, these main groups. Okay, uh, the first one and the first one we will start with are the surface epithelia. Uh, these are actually the first ones which which are covering inner or outer surfaces of our body. So, outer surface is for example, our skin, the epithelium of the skin, inner surfaces are uh, like uh, the inner lining of uh, the digestive system or the inner lining of uh, the respiratory tract, of the blood vessels. Okay, so actually all organs which have a lumen, which have a space inside, these are usually tubular organs, they have an epithelial lining so the innermost layer of these organs are always uh, or is always epithelium and it's always a surface epithelium. Functionally, we can have uh, also glandular epithelium. So the glands are also derived from uh, the epithelial tissue. And there are some transitions between uh, different kinds of basic tissue types. So for example, between the muscle tissue and the epithelial tissue, uh, we have a transition called the myoepithelium. Or between the nervous tissue and the epithelium, we, can, we have the sensory epithelium. Okay, so they can be considered both uh, epithelia and also as uh, nerve tissue, more, uh, we say, actually, we, we uh, consider them more epithelium than, than the other tissue types but uh, they have the characteristics of either uh, the muscle tissue or the or the nerve tissue so let's see the the surfaces of the epithelial cells in my uh, examples now i i use uh, surface epithelial cells okay because uh, this will be the, the biggest group of the epithelial tissues okay so these are now two surface epithelial cells next to each other. They are sitting on the basement membrane, okay, which is this part. And below the basement membrane, as we already mentioned, we always have a connective tissue layer. So from these characteristics, which we discussed, what you can see is that uh, in between the two cells, there is only a very, very thin gap a very thin extracellular matrix. Okay, and the cells are connected with each other and they are very tightly connected with each other. The upper surface of the cell, uh, which actually is uh, towards the lumen, towards the cavity of the uh, given organ, is the so-called epical surface. Okay, on the epical surface, we can find usually different kinds of surface projections. Uh, on the sides, we have the so-called lateral surface, where you have the different kinds of cell junctions with which the cells are uh, interconnected with each other. And the lower surface, which connects to the basement membrane, is called the basal surface. Uh, and actually, the, the the basal and the lateral surface, these are more similar to each other, and this is why we can consider them together as the basal lateral surface. Okay, so we can differentiate the basal lateral surface and an epical surface. And let's start with, with this basal lateral surface and uh, more precisely the basal surface, because this is the maybe the, the most simple one. Uh, 
the epithelial cells are connected to the basement membrane and the underlying connective tissue with uh, these special structures called the hemidesmosomes. Okay, so these are uh, junctions between the epithelial cells and the underlying basement membrane and the connective tissue underneath it. Okay, you don't have to know the, the details of the hemidesmosomes. That's uh, enough that, that they connect the epithelial cells and the underlying tissues with each other. But what is the basement membrane exactly? That is the next, uh, next important thing to know. And uh, this is also very, very frequently asked in the exam. So uh, it's worth uh, remembering what the basement membrane is and what the layers of the basement membrane is. And here I would like to point out that uh, here usually we we use two different expressions, basement membrane and basement lamina. The basement lamina is actually the uppermost layer of the basement membrane, but many, many books and literature use these two expressions as synonyms. Okay, so uh, sometimes the basement membrane is referred to basement lamina. It's it's a mistake actually, but uh, it's nowadays it's so commonly used uh, that that they they are. You, you should know that they, these are different structures, but uh, unfortunately, many times they are used as synonyms. So, what are the functions of the basement membrane? So, first of all, this is. Uh, the, this is the structure which, which separates the epithelium and the connective tissue. This is actually a barrier, a physical and uh, a diffusion barrier as well. Yes, Ali, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about, the, about this one that you said, basement membrane, basement lamina. You said that uh, they are ones, they, they are the same, but they are not the same. I didn't hear exactly because uh, this is the the lower layer. This is the lower layer of basement membrane. Uh, the, the basement, basement membrane. Mm -hmm. This will be on the on the next uh, slide actually. That the basement membrane is uh, composed of two main layers. The upper one, which is closer to the epithelium, is the basement lamina or lamina basalis. Uh, which has two sublayers, the lamina rara and the lamina densa. And below it, we have a thicker layer, a much, much thicker layer, the lamina fibroreticularis. Uh, and actually, unfortunately, many books uh, use la basement lamina or lamina basalis instead of the basement membrane expression. Uh, there is a, a big difference between the two because the, the basement lamina, the lamina basalis, is just a very thin layer uh, produced by the epithelial cells. And actually, the biggest, bigger layer is the lamina fibroreticularis. So if you say lamina basalis instead of basement membrane, then, then we should refer to only this, this thin layers, thin layer. But uh, as I mentioned, it is a common mistake uh, in the books that they write lamina basalis instead of membrana basalis or, their, or basement membrane. Uh, so be aware of this fact that they, they use these two expressions and they, they uh, mix up these two expressions sometimes. Uh, this is what I, I wanted to, to say with this. Okay, so. These are not the same, but not the same. But uh, in many books, they are considered to be the same, and they are used as synonyms. But you should know the difference between the basement membrane and the basement lamina. And uh, then let's get back to the functions, the further functions of the basement membrane. Um, and uh, actually, yes. 
So it is very important in the regeneration of the epithelial tissues. So if if it is uh, if it is also injured, and not just the the epithelium is injured, then the regeneration won't be perfect. Uh, very important in the pathology as well. Tumors, if the, they break through the basement membrane, then they can give metastasis. And very, very important, all the basic tissues, so epithelial tissue, muscle, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue, all of them are surrounded by, by a basement membrane. Okay, so on the first picture, you can see smooth muscle cells, and we stained the basement membrane of these smooth muscle cells with a purple stain, a purple dye called pus hematoxylin. The pus is actually uh, which will stain the basement membrane purple. Okay, so around each muscle cell, we can see a basement membrane. With this kind of uh, staining, it is very uh, nice because uh, you will see the borders of the cell very nicely. Okay, if you don't stain the, stain the basement membrane, it won't be possible to see the cell borders. We will see examples for this later on. Around the uh, adipocytes, we also have basement membranes. Okay, this is also stained with past hematoxylin. You can see them, this purple lining around the cells, these white cells, those are the fat cells. And around them, you can see the basement membrane as well. Okay. It is possible to stain the basement membrane because of the lamina fibro reticularis. Okay, so in this layer, it is called fibro reticularis because it contains lots of reticular fibers. And the reticular fibers are PES positive, meaning that they can be stained with uh, the PAS dye. And as the PAS dye has a purple uh, color, this is why if we stain these structures with PAS, then we will see the basement membrane with a, a purple, purple color. Some other examples for the basement membranes from, from different uh, tissues. For example, from the trachea. Uh, in the trachea, actually, we can see a quite thick basement membrane. Here it is also uh, stained with pus hematoxylin. Okay, uh, and this is the surface epithelium above it. And of course, below it, as we already mentioned, we have the connective tissue layer. In another example, here in the lower uh, left corner, this is a skin uh, slide. We see the epithelial tissue on the top. You can see that the cells are very, very tightly connected to each other. Okay, they are sitting on the basement membrane. And below the basement membrane, we have again connective tissue. With this is a hematoxylin in staining, and with hematoxylin in staining, the basement membrane is not visible usually, only if it's very, very thick. Okay, so here actually we, we do not see with light microscope, we do not see uh, the basement membrane. We just know theoretically that the basement membrane is there, always there between an epithelial tissue and the connective tissue. Okay, and the same is true here on the right side. Uh, the slide is from the oesophagus, so this is the epithelium, the surface epithelium, where the cells are very, very tightly connected to each other. They are sitting on the basement membrane, which is uh, not visible now with the hematoxylin housing staining. And below it, we have the connective tissue, uh, which is always found below the basement membrane of uh, an epithelial tissue. Okay, on the lateral surface of the cells, I already mentioned that the cells are connected to each other. Here, we have different kinds of uh, junctions between the cells. Okay, the 
order is uh, like I wrote it here, the uppermost junctions are the so-called tight, tight junctions or the Latin name is Zonula Occludens. Uh, maybe some of the books will use this older name. Okay, and as the name suggests, this is a very, very tight junction uh, connection between two cells. And this is why it will, uh, it will act as a, as a barrier. So it won't get every, every molecule through. It, it, can, uh, it can function as a barrier. It's a very important barrier. Below the tight junctions, we can see a belt-like connection, which is called the zonula adherens. Okay, it uh, doesn't have any, any other English names as I know. Uh, below this, we have the so-called desmosomes, or with other words, it's called the macula adherens. It's like a little spot, so it's not around the whole cell. Uh, only in smaller spots we can we can find these these desmosomes. Macula means actually uh, spots okay. or spot. And below this, the lowermost uh, one is the so-called gap junction, or the older name is nexus, which are actually small tubes, small canals in between two cells, through which different kinds of nutrients or ions. Uh, other molecules can get through. This is, for example, very important in between uh, the cardiac muscle cells, where the impulse uh, produced by the, the uh, sinoatrial node will be uh, or can travel through from one cell to the other. Okay, so the electrical impulse can travel through these gap junctions as well. Okay. On the apical surface, so the surface which, which is towards the lumen or towards the outer world in case of our skin, <clears throat> we can have different kinds of uh, surface projections. There are only a few cells in our body which, which do not have any of these surface projections. Okay, so almost all our cells uh, will have some kind of surface projections. Uh, can be that it's only a, a few uh, microvilli, but but still uh, they will have something. Most almost every every uh, cell of our body. So actually, there are basically three main types of surface projections. We have the microvilli. We have the sterocilia and the kinocilia. The microvilli, and actually all of these three, so both uh, microvilli, sterocilia, and kinocilia, these are little projections of uh, the cytoplasm and of the member cell membrane, outpouchings of the cell membrane itself. Okay, in case of a microvillus, these are quite tiny projections. Only in between one and two micrometer is the length of one microvillus, and, and they are smaller than, than one micrometer in diameter. Uh, they are stabilized by actin filaments, so there are actin filaments inside these little microvilli. In a, an electromicroscopic uh, picture, they would look like this. Okay, so this is one microvillus. This is the cell membrane, this round structure, and in the middle you can see the cross sections of the actin filaments. I try to draw this for you. So these blue ones or black ones, these are the actin filaments inside, and the orange uh, circle is the cell membrane. Okay, uh, if a cell has more thousands of microvilli on the surface, then we call it a brush border or striated border. Okay, so we have uh, such cells, for example, in the small intestine where uh, the resorption happens and these mic microvilli are very important for increasing the surface for the resorption in, in the intestine, for example.
the sterile cilia are very similar to the microvilli. Actually, they are long microvilli. Okay, much, much longer, 10 times longer than a microvillus, but the structure is the same. They have also the actin filaments in the axis, uh, and uh, they are also for, for surface increasing, increasing and uh, through this they can uh, take part in the resorption. And this kind of uh, surface projections we can find in the epididymidic duct. So it's in the, in the male epididymis. Uh, we will see later on uh, in the labs, you will see some examples for this. And the third one, third one are uh, uh, the kinocilia. Okay, these are also a little bit longer than the microvilli, but a little bit shorter than uh, the sterocilia. In between three and five, sometimes can be 10 micrometer long, but they have a very, very different uh, organization, a very different structure. So if we take a look at the inside of a kinocilium, this is the cross section of the kinocilium, then we will see microtubules inside. Okay, so in the microvilli and sterocilia, we find actin filaments inside, but in case of the kinocilia, we find microtubules, and actually this may make it possible that the kinocilium will uh, move. Okay, so it's able to move. Again, it's a very, very typical question in the exam. What is the ultrastructure of the surface projection? If you say ultrastructure, then we mean the electron microscopic structure of, uh, of these uh, processes. So in case of the sterocilia and the microvilli, you have to mention the actin filaments. Okay, so the ultrastructure of these uh, the sterocilia and microvilli is that they are uh, they are built up of actin filaments, and in case of the kinocilia, kinocilia are different. They are uh, composed of microtubules, and you should know also the organization of these microtubules. So, in the middle of the kinocilium, you find two pair uh, a pair of microtubule, a central microtubule pair, and on the periphery you can find nine so-called duplets. Okay, these are uh, pairs of microtubules on the periphery, and in between these microtubules we have some uh, motor proteins which will make uh, the whole structure move. And uh, the microtubules are anchored to the so-called basal bodies, or uh, cent these are actually from the cent derived from the centrioles of the cells, and uh, these basal bodies are found on the top of the cell below the kinocilia, and lots of basal bodies next to each other will will make a line. This is the line of the basal bodies, which will be usually visible on uh, the slides where you have epithelium with uh, kinocilia. I will show you examples for this uh, in a minute as well. So, most importantly, kinocilia are such cytoplasmic processes which are movable. They are able to move some kind of fluid on the surface of the epithelium, for example, in the respiratory tract, uh, where the mucous membrane is covered by, uh, by the mucus, so uh, a fluid actually, where the microorganisms or dust particles can get stuck. And as these kinocilia move this fluid film, they move this fluid towards our uh, oral cavity and pharynx, and this is how we can get rid of uh, foreign particles. Okay, so this is a very important part of, uh, of our defense system. 
in the, in the respiratory tract. You also have kinocilia, for example, in uh, the fallopian tube. Of course, there they have a different function. They will also move a fluid film on the surface of uh, the fallopian tube, but with this fluid, actually these, the, uh, the oocyte will be moved towards the uterus. Okay, so this is how the, the oocyte can get closer and closer to the, to the uterus. Uh, here you can see the electron microscopic structure of the kinocilia, so with the, the central microtubule pair and the peripheral nine peripheral microtubule uh, duplets. How do they look like in a, in a real histological slide? So I put here two different organs and two different stainings. You will see both of them uh, in the histology labs. So first of all, what, what can we see? On the first uh, picture, this is, a, this is a trochea slide. You can see the surface epithelium on the top. Okay, so this is the epithelium. Below the epithelium, you can see the basement membrane. And of course, as always, below the basement membrane, you can see the connective tissue layer. On the top, on the epical surface of the cells, we can see the kinocilia. Okay, so these are the kinocilia. And this line here, this little bit darker stained line, this is the line of the basal bodies. So these are the structures where the kinocilia, where the microtubules of the kinocilia are fixed or anchored. It's much better visible on this uh, so-called iron hematoxylin staining. This is from uh, the fallopian tube. Here, this would be the surface epithelium. Okay, somewhere here, there would be the basement membrane. It's not that very well visible here. And below it, we have uh, some connective tissue. It's, I know that uh, at first look, it's very hard uh, to distinguish between these cells, but um, with the practice, you will you will get used to it and, and it uh, won't be that, that hard later on. So this is the epithelium. On the surface of these epithelial cells, we can see the kinocilia. And this black line here, this would be the line of the basal bodies. And this is a very common mistake in the exam, and this is why I would like to emphasize it, that uh, the students very frequently mix up the basement membrane with the basal bodies. Both of them is basal, something basal, basement. Okay, the basement membrane is always on the basal surface of the cells. The basal bodies are closer to the apical surface. Always. Okay, just, just below the kinocilia. You can see this very nice black line in case of an iron hematoxylin staining. In case of a hematoxylin housing staining, it would be a red. Okay, uh, here is a little uh, table actually where, where uh, I try to sum up on which kind of epithelium do we find the, the different kinds of uh, surface projections? Okay, you will see that, for example, simple squamous and stratified epithelia never have surface projections. The pseudo-stratified uh, epithelia are the ones which uh, most commonly have, uh, have some kind of surface projection. Okay, and the cuboidal and columnar epithelium, they can either have or not have. We will talk about these kinds of epithelia uh, in the next lecture, which, because we will have uh, now 10 more minutes, uh, we will try, we will uh, start the surface epithelia as well. Uh, but uh, here I would like to stop for a minute and if there is any question, then, uh huh. Yeah, Paul? Yes, um, I have a question. So, in the exam, basically, we should be able to um, know what type of um, 
um, cell we are looking at that we have to know which type of apical surface it would be. Mm -hmm. Specified whether it won't be specified whether it is this or this. So we are the ones that have to determine that, right? Yes. Yes. So actually, in the exam, uh, you will get two different slides, which you have to recognize, and of course, which you have to be able to talk about. So you have to recognize the different kinds of tissues, the different kinds of cells, if they have surface projections, then the surface projections. You should know the theory always, so what's in the book and what we talk about in the lectures. It will be always uh, very important as well. But, and this is what we will, we will practice throughout the whole semester in the histology labs. Okay, so in the histology labs, we will go through each exam slides one by one, and we will discuss every little detail. What is this? What is that? How can you recognize this structure? How can you recognize that structure? Okay, so this is what we will practice throughout the whole semester. At the beginning, it's very, very hard. I know everything looks the same. Uh, but uh, believe me, uh, towards the end of the semester and hopefully much sooner, uh, you will be able to, to differentiate between the different tissue types. And for this, it's very important to know the basics. And now we are talking about the basics of the epithelial tissue. OK, so what I, what I told you at the very beginning, it, is, uh, it would be very important, uh, and we'll go back there, in recognizing an epithelial tissue. OK, so if you see cells which are very tightly attached to each other and they have uh, hardly uh, any extracellular space, then this is most, this, that will be most probably an epithelial tissue. You will also know that if you see an organ which has a lumen, then you should also know that towards the lumen there will be always an epithelial tissue. Okay, so if you know these, these uh, theoretical uh, things, then it will help you in, in the recognition of the tissues, of the different tissue types. So it's, it's very important to, to practice a lot. So if, if you take a look at this picture on the right, on the esophagus picture, then uh, you can see that here where it's white, this is, this is the surface of the organ. Now you, we, we have to decide if, if, if this is an outer surface or an inner surface. Actually, you will, you will know this because on inner surfaces, we will find always uh, keratinized epithelium without any nuclei and so on and so on. You will learn this later. So actually this white part and on the trial as well, this would be the lumen. So you know that towards the lumen, we always have some kind of epithelium. Or if you take a look at the cells, what we can recognize here uh, and what are the stained the best are always the nuclei of the cells. So these, these blue dots or blue uh, round or, or uh, oval structures, these are the nuclei, different kinds of cell nuclei. You can see that on, in this tissue, which is the epithelium, the cells are much, much tightly connected to each other. There is much smaller gap between uh, the nuclei. Okay, so this is a, a very important characteristic of, uh, of the epithelial tissue. And if you take a look at, at uh, the connective tissue below it, then there is much more space between uh, the cell nuclei. Okay, because in the connective tissue, in most of the connective tissues, we have much bigger extracellular space. Or here on, in the skin uh, slide, this is the same. Okay, so first you have to learn the basic characteristics of the basic tissue types, how to be able to, to recognize an epithelial tissue, a connective tissue, and so on and so on. And if you already know this, then you can go on and, uh, and learn the details and uh, the other theories. For example, 
the types of uh, the surface epithelia or uh, the different types of cells in the connective tissue and so on and so on. Okay, is it clear what, what uh, you will have to know on the exam? Because it's, it's good to know at the beginning what you will be asked later on, because then you can focus on those things. So it's very important to, to learn the basics first. And this is true for each subject, actually not just for histology. Any other questions? Excuse me, I have one. Uh, should we also recognize the organs, uh, for example, esophagus, that it's a slate of an esophagus? Mm -hmm. uh, it is also a good question. So this semester, uh, the organ itself, it's not that uh, important that you, or, uh, that you uh, recognize it, but you should know that you should recognize the epithelium and the type of the epithelium, for example, that this is here a stratified squamous non-carotinizing epithelium. And you should be able to tell us examples where such epithelium can be found in the body. And this is the oesophagus, for example. Uh, so this semester, or in the oral cavity. So this semester it will be enough that you tell us examples where such tissues could be found in the body. And next semester we will learn actually the whole wall structure, the structure of, of the esophagus and the different kinds of organs. And then you will be able to differentiate precisely between the, the different organs. Okay, so now you have to, to recognize the, the tissues and to tell us examples where they are found in the body. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, so uh, we have not much time left, so just uh, a very, very, very small introduction for the surface epithelia. This I actually already told you at the beginning. So we will go on uh, on uh, Wednesday, I think we will meet on Wednesday with uh, the surface epithelia. And then uh, on next Thursday, we will do the glandular epithelia and uh, a little bit we we'll talk about the other epithelial types as well. Okay, so surface epithelial, they are called surface epithelial because they are covering surfaces. These could be inner or outer surfaces. Okay, outer surface is the skin. Inner surface is the lining of the oral cavity, nasal cavity, respiratory tract, uh, any other organs which have a lumen, which have a cavity will be lined with a surface epithelium. Okay, and we will classify the surface epithelia by their layers. And this is the last thing I would like to tell you. We have two main groups of epithelial, surface epithelia. We have simple and stratified epithelia. It's very easy to, to tell uh, the difference. In case of a simple epithelium, each cell are in connection with the basement membrane. In case of stratified epithelium, there is always a basal layer which uh, it reaches in contact with the basement membrane and the other cells are sitting on top of this basal layer. Uh, so not all the cells are in contact with the basement membrane. This is the main difference. And then there are some other details which we will discuss uh, next week. Okay, so the difference between a simple and a pseudo stratified, the different types where they are uh, found in the body, this will be discussed then uh, next week on Wednesday. Uh, so now I would like to finish uh, the lecture for today, but if there are any other questions, then uh, please ask.
Yes, I see uh, that the uh, hand is raised. Yes. Um, for the channel cilium, there's a, as you mentioned, there's a motor protein involved for this microtubule pair is consists a uh, different kind of motor protein. Could you please uh, explain again? Uh, so there, what you have to know, actually, you sh I think you should have learned it also already in biology, um, how these, these uh, microtubules are connected with each other. Uh, there are smaller uh, motor proteins called D9 arms, uh, and you don't have to know exactly how it works. Uh, that is more uh, physiology. Uh, you should know actually what I, I drew here, what I wrote here. Okay, so that will be enough. Uh, precisely, you don't have to know how exactly these, these, motor, these motor proteins can contract actually, and this is how they contract in, in different times, and, and this is how the kinocelia will, uh, will move. Uh, but if you, if you um, type it in uh, YouTube, then you will find uh, nice uh, animations about how the kinocelia are moving. So you can, you can check that out if you want. But you, you don't have to know that. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can you can uh, find me on uh, Teams and you can write me. I I can uh, I will answer you. Uh, and then uh, have a nice afternoon and see you next. I think Wednesday.